Hey now, what's going on everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I just got done watching the season premiere of Arrow. Season 4, episode 1, entitled The Green Arrow. I was geeking out just from seeing the name of, of the episode alone. But I don't want to waste any time because there's so much to talk about just in this one episode. At the very beginning, we see Oliver Queen living a very normal life. He's living in a very nice neighborhood, in a home, with Felicity. And they're happy together. At least, they seem happy. And they're doing everything normal. They're cooking breakfast, lunch. They're having dinner with the neighbors. But I will say, I liked Stephen Mills' new Oliver in this one episode. Just in the sense that he's not as brooding, he's not as dark, he's not as as angry all the time. He was a lot more upbeat. He was a lot more seemingly like himself. Like I follow him on Facebook, Stephen Amell, and, and he seems like a nice, happy person. So I like how he's playing this Oliver Queen. But when you find out that he's about to propose to Felicity, I'm like, whoa! So they're already at that point. I mean, I guess that they've been dating for however long they were dating last season, even though it was back and forth, on and off. But I guess now they've been dating six months straight. And they're living together. So, okay, fine. I guess technically you could be engaged, get engaged to somebody at that point. But still, I thought this was moving all too fast, especially because we as an audience haven't seen them as a couple up until this point. This is all mute though because he never got a chance to propose because first we cut to Thea as Speedy or as she wants to be called the Red Arrow, Laurel Black Canary, and Diggle aka Black Magneto. <laughs> I'm sorry I said this in, after I saw the trailer. Uh, I'm not that big a fan of Diggle's helmet or mask whatever you want to call it, because it looks too much like Magneto. I think the show could have been a lot more creative in coming up with a design for Diggle. However, this or any type of disguise is better than no disguise. So you had me complaining last season about him not having his face concealed or his identity a secret. He was going out there with his face exposed. At least they have something for him, even if I don't care for how it looks. It was still cool to see the three of them in this chase scene, a nice action scene. I love seeing how they exploded the back of the truck like that. And, and it was cool to see what they, I guess, have been doing the last six months without Arrow or Oliver there to help them. It seems like also Diggle is calling the shots and the leader of the group, which is very interesting to see because if you think about how this show started, in the first episode, Diggle was Oliver's driver and then Bodyguard, like, he, as a character, has come such a long way, and he's such a stronger character at this point. I really like the actor, so it's nice to see that. We get a Flash Day reference. When Detective Lance, or Captain Lance, or whatever the hell he is, they were in that meeting because there's no mayor, all the mayors have been getting killed, so nobody wants to be the mayor. They're having the meeting, they're talking, and Lance says, oh, we should just throw a Flash Day, like, Central City is doing, which is very cool to see that reference because it coincides with the Flash episode from last night. So you can see chronologically these shows are all happening at the exact same time. Damien Dark, the new big bad, the new villain of the show. Neil McDonough playing him, first of all, great actor. I love especially seeing him as a villain. He's very dark. He's very menacing. He's viable, believable as a villain. And you see many different facets to his character just in this one episode. I mean, the first time we see him, he sneaks into the meeting very creepily and, and just somehow entered a private meeting easily out of the shadows. I don't know how he did that, but clearly there, there's some mystical powers, I guess, going on with his character, which is very interesting. And you see that, I guess because he thinks Arrow is dead, he's decided now to take over the city. Star City! 
by the way. They didn't make too much of a big deal over the city being named different. I'm sure we'll get to that. But still, the city's changed, and he's trying to take over. He has his army of people. He was working on blowing up damn near, I don't know how many blocks of the city to prove his point. So Thea and Laurel go to ask for the arrow. Specifically, they want the arrow. Oliver says that the arrow's dead. And I love that he looked over at Felicity and he said, you're, you're being unusually quiet. And she said, there's nothing to talk about. Our friends need help. Let's go fucking help them. I like that. I like that she didn't get on him saying like, oh, you said we we're going to live a normal life, blah, blah, blah. No, she was like, let's help our friends. That's what we should do. That's what's right. So, I mean, I like Felicity. It's weird how everybody at the beginning loved her character, and now I see a lot of hate for Felicity online. I'm not saying everybody feels that way, but I see a lot of it, and I don't, I don't like it because <laughs> I don't agree with it. I mean, if, if that's people's opinion, fine. I just I like this actress a lot. Diggle does not like the fact that Oliver is back, and... You, you you just as easily could have had there be no issues and he gets welcomed back and it's more about him dealing with being back and maybe being rusty or going through that. But no, the big issue here is that Diggle can't forgive Oliver for what happened last season. And when you think about it, it makes a whole lot of sense. It would have been too weird for Diggle to just say, oh yeah, well, you know, you kidnapped my wife and daughter, so hey, hey pal. He doesn't trust him anymore. And then even when he starts to realize he it might not so much be for what he did, maybe he just doesn't trust Oliver as a person. So all of that I thought was very interesting. As much as I might not love seeing them against each other, because I like them both, I still get where Diggle is coming from. And let's talk about when Oliver realizes that Felicity has been helping the group behind his back. What? I wasn't expecting that. How for the last, what, five months she's been helping the group, lying to Oliver. I thought that was kind of messed up. But even Oliver said he didn't care that she was lying. He just cared that, that she was kind of off doing this one thing that he thought she didn't want any part of. Which is interesting because, again, if you go back to the beginning of the series when Felicity first showed up, she had no interest in, in helping them this far, being a part of the group. She came in for like one thing and then it just kind of kept going. But now she loves it. Now it's the thrill or it's just maybe the act of saving people. She loves it. So it's also very interesting to see how far her character has come along. Damien Dark, like I said, has mystical powers. When the whole group found his hideout and they saw him virtually sucked the life out of one of his guys that was very weird and it's kind of funny that Oliver instantly knew that he wasn't a metahuman I mean realistically why shouldn't he think that he's not a metahuman I mean I know obviously he's not a metahuman they showed him at his lair and he's doing some hocus pocus prayer stuff and that's where he's getting his powers from so okay Oliver's right but I don't understand how you don't see that and your first thought is it's a metahuman because I remember last season there was a guy who showed up in Arrow who was a metahuman and they knew he was a metahuman just because he had powers so I don't know I'm, I'm being very nitpicky with that I know I just I had to bring it up also, Oliver realizes that Thea might be a little out of control because one of the guys, she just beats the shit out of, punches him over and over again. Hell, it looked like she was about to kill him. And Oliver had to stop her and he tried to talk to her at one point and she wasn't really having it. I did like how Diggle said to Oliver, look, you were pretty out of control when you first started too. Because Oliver was killing people in season one. Maybe even some of season two. But definitely season one, he was killing guys. He snapped the one dude's neck in the first episode. So you have to realize that Thea, who also was trained by a League of Assassin, her father, Malcolm Merlin, it makes sense that she's going to be a little rougher around the edges. And look at Diggle. Diggle has a gun. You see him out there on the field, and he's shooting people. Dead, I assume. And I haven't heard Oliver come at him with that, which, I mean, 
he's trying to get Diggle's trust back, so maybe attacking him for having a gun won't be the best way to start. But still, that, that should probably be addressed. I don't know how much I care for Diggle having a gun. The new costume, the new design, when Oliver put it on, I completely geeked out. Even near the end of the episode when Oliver said on the news, he had that broadcast where he said, I am the Green Arrow. I lost my shit. I said, this is fucking awesome. This is something that we've been waiting for watching this show. When was he going to become the Green Arrow? When was he going to look more traditionally like the Green Arrow? Finding out that Detective Lance is working with Dark? What? I definitely wasn't expecting that. I'm shocked. I mean, I know Lance went in there and he said that he didn't sign up for people to die and all this stuff, so he was against it now, but still it's like, what did you think Dark was doing? He doesn't look like somebody who's on the up and up. At the end, we see six months later, and we get a quick Barry Allen cameo, which was very cool, but they're at a grave site, and Oliver is pissed. He's talking about now, I don't know if he, he said Zoom to Barry and Barry said yes. I don't know if he's saying like to Barry, oh, you're, you're dealing with Zoom or if whoever the gravesite they're at, Zoom killed this person. I'm not sure which one we're talking about, but it seems like in six months, probably the mid-season finale, somebody will die and somebody very close to Oliver because he then knelt down, was was uh, shedding tears, and I'm thinking it's Felicity. And I, I don't like this. I I might be one of the few people at this point who don't want to see her die, but I just, I don't want to see her die. I don't want it even a little bit. I know maybe uh, the original plan, or if you go with how the comics are, Oliver's supposed to end up with the Black Canary, Laurel Lance. I get that. There might have even been a time where I wanted to see that, but I think at this point the show has evolved so much, has done its own thing so much that I want to see him end up with Felicity. I don't want to see her get killed off. It could be somebody else. It could be. It could be Diggle. It could be Thea, even though Thea died last season, so I don't think it's her. Also, if you do kill somebody, who is to say that you can't put them in the Lazarus pit or you can't find any other way to bring them back. Hell, we're bringing in Constantine this season. So, you're gonna have to explain how, at this point, whoever dies, why can't we try to bring them back? I'm sure they will, but still, that's something to think about. Last but not least, let me talk about the flashbacks because Amanda Waller tracked down Oliver Queen, found him in a bar, and the line where she says, or he says, how did you find me? And she says, well, the world's too small for Oliver Queen to hide. I thought, wow, they didn't steal that from Batman Begins. Ra's al Ghul, anyone? Either way, though, I like that she put him back on the island. It was something that I never, I didn't really care too much for him being off the island last season. I just, I thought the whole point of him being on the island was that he was there for five years. So why are we going to take him off for a year? But he's back now, so we'll see what goes on now with that. Anyways, guys, I love this episode. I had a lot, of, a lot of fun with it, a lot of great action, a lot of cool fight scenes, and, and, it, and it's more, it feels a lot more like a Green Arrow show. As much as I liked the show before, I think it's going in a very good direction. I'm all for it. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below, what did you think of tonight's episode? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!